Some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite NFL team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite NFL team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite NFL team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite NFL team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The Raz Guys Morning Show. 93.3 The Platter. The Raz Guys. This would have won the Grammy, this song, but Jethro Toll won instead. Yep, yep. Oh, this is your Steely Dan one. Was it Steely? Not a long time ago. Oh, yeah, years. you're right. Jethro Toll won over uh, Metallica that year. Is he still alive? Steely Dan? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he is a damn. Yeah. Oh, he changed? It's kind of like one of those uh, Leonard Skinner and Sawyer Brown things. Marshall Tucker ain't Marshall Tucker Band, one of those. Yeah. Humble pie is not a food. <laughs> Sorry, Should be. Sorry, Brown. Yours. Don't you hate making jokes when it's uh, <laughs> people? Don't, well, damn it, you just took the one I was about to say. It's like I always would make that joke. What? Sorry, Brown. Yours. Yours. Yeah. That's what you do, man. Or like That's I made one do. off there and nobody snickered at it. And I was like, God, that was funny. Uh-huh. And I was like, you know, talking about like brothels down in New Orleans and stuff. Mm-hmm. They should call it the home of sexuals. Yeah. But then people say it fast and they're like, "Where are you going?" You know. Nobody snickered. No one. What does that tell you? It tells me that you're not satisfied. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) 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 There's the real you now. Yeah, there's Fat Bo. He's back with us. All right. The brutally honest music review. It is open to any and everybody, any genre. It doesn't even matter if you're a kid band. I'm serious. If you're a family band and y'all like get out there and like, you know, like mom and uh, is singing and daddy's over on a banjo, yeah, play it, put, send it to us. We would love to play it. The only caveat to that. <laughs> I gave Fat Boy Tic tac tacs That's what you hear. <laughs> I meant to get three and I got like 30. Yeah, <laughs> TikTok. I, I got BOGO Tic Tacs this morning. Don't worry TikToks. about it. Are they orange ones? No. Nah, he won't get well, them. I get the white ones, man. Um, I want to have good breath. Well, it's open to anybody that makes music. (laughs) You don't even have to sing. You make instrumental music, any genre of music, it doesn't matter. The only thing is you can't be signed. The caveat is we then break it down. We give our brutally honest music review. What we like about it, what we don't like about it. And P1s, we encourage you to uh, play along. Mm -hmm. Uh, 72341, the TLCMotors.com text line. Yeah, we always want to know what y'all think of what we're playing, too. Uh, but we're very, in this room, very diverse for their musical likes and dislikes. Fat Boy doesn't like music. <laughs> and then we all vary on the, the styles that we like. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we don't <laughs> like the song, you will hear our noise makers. For instance, Fat Boy will make a bunch of noise in the background with Tic Tacs. <laughs> Well, I'd be better than what better I got. Than the other one. It might be better than Shake what you got. Shake your tic tac cup. It's fine. Shake your tic and Let's retire the. It's way better. Boy, yeah. a bunch of people just got horny in Boone County. Right. <laughs> 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 like Boone, Boone County mate and call. Uh, you've heard the Fart Gun 3000. That's me. It's a, a great uh, novelty item I purchased from Cracker Barrel. Nine has the World War II siren. Oh, boys. Oh, they're coming. They're, they're coming. They're going to check Jeremy Clement's regular car now. I got the only one I have to turn my mic off to use it. It's very loud. <laughs> and then Paige has the bell. 
All right, here we go. This band, again, from Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, yeah, man. I've been told they've been on the show before. Yeah. We've had a lot of Oh, yeah, we said, we said, come back, and they said, by God. I wait. have seen them play a couple times. It's been a few years, though. I'd like to see them again. Play music? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was Magic the Gathering. World of Warcraft. With the song, You're Not the One, this is the Pinks on the Brutally Honest Music Review. Nobody, at least I, I, I could see Nine never picked up his noisemaker. No, I didn't see anybody grab one. I always have mine ready. Yeah. But I, I, I set it down very shortly into it. It's a good rock and roll band right there, man. Let's change this up a bit. Fat Boy. Who, yeah, again, it's, it's who you are. You usually don't like a lot of music. It don't take a lot to get me going. You got to be simple. Yeah. This is like a simple hook. Mm-hmm. Nice beat. Yeah. Do you need familiarity? I don't know. I can't really place any. They say we all do. Yeah. We need familiarity. This one is like, you're not the one. Uh-huh. This is stuck in my head now. Yeah. You're not the one. On the other spectrum, Paige, you you know music. You talk about all the big tours and stuff. What were your thoughts on this song? You know, I kind of like I like the lyrics. And, uh, you know, what I really liked about the song is that little guitar riff. Once that kicked in, I thought that was really interesting. The vocals are good, too. Yes. I thought that song was sexy. Man, well, man it does have a sexy sound on it. You're right. It had a sexy sound. Like, you know, we were talking about the other day, What what's a good sexy metal song? Or what is there a metal love song? And we pointed out a few, but... Uh-huh. It's tough to... Like, if you're having, like, some get-down music... So what's a good one? <laughs> well, that's how long you last. <laughs> 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 but uh by Metallica. But uh you know, true. You like there's a few by nine inch nails, you know, but there that pacing right there, man, that was oh, just, yeah. that was sexy. Yeah, man. It uh I have a priapism. I heard uh you know, I, I heard what I what I would say some like S T P kind of influence. Yeah. And uh, a little Brother Kane influence on that too, I'll tell you what. I love Brother Kane. That's a badass rock and roll band. But more than just that, those two just kinda jumped out at me. I was like, here in the vein of some of their stuff, reminded, or reminded me of at least. Yeah. That uh, one gripe. Good. I wish you would have said ain't instead of aren't. Uh, <laughs> you ain't the one. You ain't the one. <laughs> ain't. Well, they're, they're from Atlanta, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Home of Brother Kane. 
Yeah, you have to wonder too. Well, let's just Hello, let's, who is representing the band today? I don't have that on my. Oh yeah, I do. Adam. Adam. Hey, Adam. Hey, what's up? You're the singer there. Did you know that? <laughs> In case you wondered. What do you think? You hear the Scott Weiland, big influence? You hear a little bit of that? Uh, or who is an influence, um, maybe? Nobody's ever mentioned Scott Weiland before, but you're not wrong. I do like him. Mm-hmm. Um, I, if, if anybody was wondering about, like, I can't quite place this influence, one thing that started to occur to me while we were mixing it was, like, like Bill Kelleher from uh, Mastodon was standing in the studio while I was doing one of those guitars, okay. and he just fell in love and said, hey, this reminds me of Queens of the Stone Age, oh, who yeah. they toured with. And oh, I yeah. was like, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it doesn't have that too. You're right. He's right. He knows music. When you're, uh, Adam, when you're releasing music uh, independently, um, you know, you, you put it out there, you want people to hear it, and thus you want to get the big contract and, and then go through the whole gamut. But I know, like, in, in radio, like, a, a lot of times I, I will say, you know, certain uh, ideas that I have for bits, and, and it, you know, it's been several years, but we would hear other radio stations maybe start using them like there's a, a couple stations that do a thing called facebook fighting now a uh, very similar <laughs> to facebook fuss so it, are you like on guard sometimes especially with the you know putting out a song that you wrote thinking oh, there's some big band out there that could hear this and kind of put this out before me not the song lyrics but maybe some twist you're doing on it because it's not really guarded yeah that's true <laughs> Well, it's it's still copyrighted. Um, just because you don't have like a large record label behind you doesn't mean that you don't have yeah, legal not, protection. Not the but lyrics, like, but a, just maybe the 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 riff or whatever. You know, like anytime right. I hear that Zach Wild sounding guitar mm-hmm. riff, whether they mean it or not, I think y'all ripped off Zach Wild. Well, <laughs> it's just an influence. It's, it's, you know, I don't know. I'm very closely guarded. I, I'm paranoid. So I try not to get too uh, too wrapped up in that. I'm an extremely anxious person anyway. Same. Like, that's totally the thing that I would worry about. But with that, I've just kind of tried to remember a good idea is a good idea. Yeah. And if if I have a good idea and somebody else uses it, then that just means that that good idea is further out there and that maybe maybe some good luck will come to me soon. God, you're such yeah. an artist. <laughs> I know, man. It's great. Yeah, you're and, such an artist. It's great. I love the attitude. And people are in the same guitar chords, so, you know. Well, mm-hmm. There's only eight of them on there, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. Um, now, uh, I, I should also point this out, too. The Pink's with an X. Yeah. Because uh, uh, several people were asking. You guys are streaming on all the different platforms. Are you going to be playing anywhere in the southeast? Uh, you could... Tell everybody about, you know, where New Orleans, up through Tennessee, Chattanooga, all down through Georgia, Carolinas. Uh, actually, we j- and this is sad news, so if you have a, a sad sound effect or a sad trombone or something, go ahead and use it. We had a tour. There, that's an extremely sad part. We had a, a tour that was, that was booked for this coming month, uh, September, and it the other band whose tour it was, that fell apart, oh, which man. leaves us without the tour dates but we're very quickly uh filling them in um we've we've got a a jaunt planned up to new york city um but what y'all would be concerned about is i've been talking to um silver tongue devils oh yeah my, about yeah. Maybe, my good friend coming to bar hey. triples bar or bellow fellow in the next couple months okay cool oh good that's yeah. that's very local then. yeah yeah fantastic yeah, tell michael miller make that happen <laughs> Rock and roll with Cherry Cola. <laughs> hey, the Pinks yeah. with an X, P I N X. Uh, check them out. Go uh, get their music, listen to it, support them, and all that. Uh, Adam, that was good, man. Appreciate you. Thank you all so much. Yeah. Have yeah. a good morning. I like when a guy's just good at interviews like that. Just, just you know, ready to talk about whatever, unprepared for it, but he just can just roll with it. <laughs> just call him unprepared. Well, he, he didn't know what we we're going to ask or anything. Well, he had no idea what it was yeah. going to be about. No. Yeah, just unprepared I, for our questions, but just ready to roll with it just because he's got that personality and he's just cool like that. That whole, like, hippie, not hippie, but just like, hey, man, you know, it's my art, but if you like it, uh, put hey, it out boy. there further. Yeah. Oh, man. That's, That's good, too. That's nice. Yeah, that was real good. Real good rock and roll band. If you want to get your music, your band, uh, your nephew's band, your granddaughter's <laughs> uh, quartet, whatever it yeah. is. Yeah, well, dude, we have yet to have a barbershop quartet do a song. I would love it. Uh-huh. I would love it. <laughs> Just text the word HONEST, H-O-N-E-S-T, to 72341. 
standard messaging and data rate do apply. Uh, and we will uh, send you the information of how you can get your music played on the Brutally Honest Music Review. That's right, Matt, man. Oh, that was real. You know what's crazy about this? I've had this forever and never put a battery in it. That wasn't the gun. That was you. Bingo. Yeah. Morning, everybody. <laughs> some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite NFL team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite NFL team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite NFL team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite NFL team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite NFL team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite NFL team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. <laughs> we can talk about drugs then. I found something interesting about drugs we can talk about right now. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that wasn't even uh, preempted. No, no. Or, or whatever the word would be. Yeah. Uh, this is just from, trying to get out of this song. This is from National Public Radio. So I oh. have, to, say, I have oh. to speak like this when I talk about it. Well, we can't. <laughs> we can't raise our inflections. No, you all. must not sound excited. Everything has to be very flat, quiet, soft, mm. and very well enunciated. It's going to be 92 today, but I feel fall in the air. You said 92. It's 92. 92. 90. No, yeah, not 90. Must enunciate for 92. National Public Radio. Doing your sex voice now. It's not really different, is it? <clears throat> it's the same thing. All right, so this headline from National Public Radio says... Marijuana use is outpacing cigarette use for the first time on record, and that is here in the United States of America. It's according to a Gallup poll. Cigarette use obviously has been on the downward trend for a few decades now. At this point, only 11% of people in America admit smoking in this poll. Um, smoking what? Uh, <laughs> this July, poll. Yeah, okay. Admitted to smoking <laughs> cigarettes in this poll. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and back in the 1950s, 45% of Americans admitted to smoking. Um, How many smoked weed then, though? Uh, I'll get to that. How the hell could you find weed back then? I, I mean, same way you found... Send was, telegrams to your dude, man? Same way you found anything <laughs> back then, you know? Not same way you do now, hard. I guess. Smoke signals, literally. Is, back then, they couldn't advertise openly on Snapchat. Oh, it smells like resin only. We need to get some over there. Look for somebody with long hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, long hair don't care. I'll sell you some weed. Yeah. <laughs> Go to the marijuana district. So. Wherever that is. Four <laughs> percent of Americans in 1969 admitted they smoked grass, reefer, marijuana. Yeah. At this point, 16 percent of Americans openly admit to smoking. I think the real number is higher than that, but openly that, admit to was 16 percent, which again outpaced cigarettes by five percent. Present tense, obviously not like while they're answering this question, but like currently, or they're admitting that they have. That's currently active smoke. Cannabis okay. regularly. 48% of Americans say they have tried it at some point in their life. Okay, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. These pollers are good. Yeah, Gallup. Uh, back in 2019, they did a poll where 83% of Americans thought cigarettes were very harmful to smokers. 14% said they're somewhat harmful. Um, and that's just gone up over time. Those numbers have gone up. Meanwhile, hmm. people have gotten more harsh over cigarettes and more accepting of pot. There's no propaganda for pot anymore i mean used to like even with the this is your brain on drugs was very uh you know are they talking about crack cocaine or are they talking about all of it together yeah uh but cigarettes and, and even uh, certainly vaping even oh, though yeah. those are usually paid for by the cigarette companies yeah uh 
it's not really been so it's it's a propaganda plus yeah. you don't hear about people dying from smoking marijuana yeah I mean, I'm, look any 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 amount of smoke in your lungs is going to be somewhat detrimental to your health but as just far is. as you hear it like i can say without a shadow of a doubt cigarettes killed my father because mm-hmm. he got cancer from it yeah and they yeah. pinpointed it yeah in his lungs and there would be i mean look you'd suffer some ill effects if you chain smoke joints for 50 60 years you just would well if you did that I think you'd probably be cool with just getting 60 years in if you got to do that every right, day. Right, I'm telling you. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and then, uh, 53% of people said they think positive effects come from pot for users. So I was thinking about this last night because I saw, you know, Joe Cunningham's running for governor in South Carolina. Yeah. He's pro-marijuana. Yeah, he is. And there was an attack So is Nancy Mace. There was an attack ad with a green filter that says, Joe likes weed. And I'm like, is that really a... Not like, really. Yeah. I mean, for, that's only for the very old folk. <laughs> who Lord. all vote, by the way. Every one of them. Was it in the font of the Reefer Madness movie poster? It should have be been. Got it. Like, Fr- where it's dripping blood? Yeah. Frat Boy Joe likes weed. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. Yeah. Uh, alcohol remains the most popular substance, though. Uh, that's, been, that's been that way for a long time. 67% of people in America said they're drinkers. Compared to 63% in 1939, so it hasn't, hasn't really changed. And it kills more people. Oh, well, far more. Far more. Far more people do it, and it kills far more people. Um, but yeah, Far I, more used to be a pharmacy. It was. You buy CDs store. there. Uh-huh. <laughs> the pharmacy with a big uh-huh. record selection. But yeah, I, I just thought it was interesting that this is the first time in any of these polls that uh, the cannabis has outpaced cigarette usage. So things are changing, but, you know, we don't really update any laws or change any of those for some reason and even though it, it, like a lot of people tell you it's become more acceptable unless you're just doing something stupid like you're not probably not gonna get in trouble for weed a lot of people say i i'm not saying that born and raised greenville south carolina uh perfect Thank attendance you. sunday school for 18 straight years i have the pens to prove it um <laughs> i i noticed the ease in the admits of drinking mm-hmm. way more ever uh because you know used to um, I, I I was kind of uh, jealous of the Catholics because at least they got to drink wine. And uh, it, I'd be open about it, uh, not have to hide it. Well, but, I mean, it's not really drinking; it's I, taking a sip. Just a total joke. Yeah. But th- the thing about now, like I know people that will, you know, post pictures of them going to church, and then that night they're having a cookout and they've got beers, and I'm like, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Like anything in moderation is all right. Yeah, but it's weird to see when you grew up like, you know, traditional. That's what I'm saying, that yeah. ease. And it's almost like, okay, well, if I see so-and-so do it, and they're not really being judged, it's okay, it's fine. That's where I think with certain states and, and places having their legalities open for weed, that's where the numbers in the polls go up. Yeah. People are like, well, it's okay to say it now. I think you've all been doing it all along. <laughs> Probably. Probably the dare line was probably over there with a water bong between takes. Yeah. Would they tell you that now in a non-traditional church? Like, hey, if you sip a little, that's eh, fine. Whatever. Depends like, on I how much know. you tithe. I can tell you, I can tell you this uh, something I found. I don't know. This, this is from Pew Research. Um, 15% of Catholics and 16% of Protestants uh, are, we'll say, drinking is morally wrong, um, whereas 7% of unaffiliated Americans will say drinking is morally wrong. Moderation but still, is the key. That means that, you know. 85% of Catholics saying, well, it's not my place to judge. And 84% of Protestants are saying, well, it's not my place to judge. But that's where we... we or I don't think it's morally wrong. We, uh, is speaking of really people with morals, not even faith-based stuff, but it's like we pick and choose the sins that, yeah. are, that are bad. You know? Yeah, we, I mean, that's definitely been a thing for a long time. Like, gluttony, hello. Yeah. What? The, what did <laughs> I just I don't do? know what you did. Know. Something different. But you made a good point <laughs> while like you a, were doing that like weird a, voice I've never heard you do before. I don't know what that was. Gluttony, hello. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point, though. And the point <laughs> remains, man, that like, gluttony is not looked down upon in the church the way other things are. Hell no. are just as bad, or not as bad in a lot of cases. And what a weird right. position to be in in your mind. To, like, you know, we're, we're talking about, uh, you know, drinking and, and drugs and all this stuff mm-hmm. at church. Uh, being a sin, but then we go to Ryan's buffet. Yeah, after, or where people are having to work on Sunday. Wait, it's, 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 now your body's a temple. For some reason, it's okay to get a twelve-piece bucket and dip it into mashed potato gravy and eat the whole thing by yourself. But it's not okay to get a tattoo because your body's a temple. Maybe it's okay to drink because thought... your body's a temple. But again, fried chicken, fine. They thought it was the size of like a shrine temple. Yeah, you know, the big. Uh, oh yeah, the big building over yeah, there. Yeah. 
or the University of Temple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, good Lord. Wow. Again, don't work on the Sabbath, but make sure other people do so I can go eat. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, nine is the only one on the show that does, for those that are texting in. Currently. Wear glasses. Go Wear, to church. That's not true. Wear glasses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll do some open phones. 1-800-774-0093. One eight. I wonder if the if the deep south, which we're definitely in right now, if we'll get that same kind of thing. Like, yeah, I go to church and I believe in all this stuff, but I drink and smoke weed. But you know what? The, the people won't because they'll be like, oh, somebody might recognize my voice from the church. Yeah. We got to get over that. We do, man. Plus, plenty more people sound like you than you realize. We that have a big so listing true. area all over the southeast. They don't know it's you. Right. My name's Nancy Cartwright, Matt's <laughs> side of town. And you can be anonymous. Morning, everybody. Some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite NFL team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite NFL team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite NFL team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite NFL team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite NFL team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite NFL team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Christ. This sucks, Matt, man. I don't go to church but smoke weed and drink all the time. But you don't want me to call, huh? <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. Thanks, Jethro. Um, no, it wasn't him. <laughs> here's, man, here's a, a good text, but it's a sad text, but it's something that you know people need to know. Just found, again, this TLCMotors.com text line, 72341. Standard data and text rate supply. Just found out how much taking the pot helps my anxiety. <laughs> taking. But I'm afraid to keep smoking it because I'm afraid I could lose my job if anyone found out. Oh, yeah. yeah you have something that helps you, but it, you, you're not allowed to have it, and we don't we don't up- update any of our laws, rules, regulations, any of that stuff, man. Well, we just won't do it. You know, and I was going to, like, you know, take the pot. That sounds like something, you know, way <laughs> people does. would say in the yeah. old days. But if, you're, if, you're, if you use, like, edibles, you're not eating the pot. You are. You're eating pot? Consuming. Yeah, you're eating the pot, consuming the pot, yeah. Can I drink it? You're taking the pot. Can I drink pot? Yeah. I'm pot animals. Put in a milkshake, sure. I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's all kind of syrups and stuff. Can I snort Tinctures? it? You do I whatever you want. What so. would happen if you snorted some keef right up your nose? Uh, you'd probably get a sinus infection. That's good. That's good. 1-800-774-0093. Yeah, we're talking about drugs. Really, that's a great point. I can't believe you are talking so openly about drugs. This is what public radio ought to be. Don't call us public radio. No, no. I was reading an article from NPR. We yeah. are NPR. Uh, let's go to Slidell, Louisiana and talk to Barry. Barry. Hi, Barry. Hey, guys. How y'all doing? And Miss Page, how you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? Uh, I'm, pre- I'm doing pretty good. I just partook a little bit ago. <laughs> but I, thought, but I, I do it medicinally so I can eat. Yeah. But, uh, What's the opposite is, of that? Yeah. Yeah. I'll smoke that. Well, <laughs> that'd be crack, man. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> or meth. Either Still one. want it? <laughs> I'll, put it? I'll put it this way. I don't slash me about a year and a half. Oh, an ounce lasts a year and a half, man. That's a long time. What? I'm sorry. Yeah, what I lasts a year? Like an ounce. God. I mean, well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't smoke like that. But my biggest thing is, you know, when the pot movement started, that's when Bill Clinton admitted to not excelling. 
I mean, inhale. Inhaling, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If he didn't exhale, that sucker would blow up. Yeah, he, he didn't inhale. You're right about that. Yeah. According to him. I have my heart to stop it. Can I let go of this weight? Yeah. In, Just, that, in, the, in the past, you wonder where they got their weight. Well, in the South, it grew, grew wild until they started spraying it. Mm-hmm. You can still go to Kentucky in certain places and pick it wild where it's still good. You know what? I've heard that. It's been a few years, but I've heard about that. Yeah, he's right. I've heard that very thing. Let's get a market in Kentucky. And pay him a visit. Yeah, we want to get on town up here. Come on, Lexington. We go foraging for weed. Come on, Louisville. Fly over some fields. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh-oh. When I I live near, uh, well, I still live close to a mountain, but I live closer to a mountain. And a lot of times, I would hear uh, helicopters going over uh-huh. all the time near this. It looks kind of bluish from the sky. Weed does. Mm-hmm. By God, that's yeah, why you got to put it in a yeah, fake swimming pool like Cheech and Chong and Nice Dreams. <laughs> Yeah, you, you got to cheat that. When it's growing, it puts off the same temperature yeah. as the tomato plant. Uh-huh. Oh, dang. I if see. you mix it with tomato plant, you're good to go. Okay. But if you have a field going in the mountain, they got you. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, I thought you were like uh, morphing the weed and the tomatoes together. Oh, okay. And you were like making well, like tomato. Yeah, you know, I think those are called potatoes. <laughs> you, like, you like grow a garden. But you have tomatoes in it, so when they look, they see tomatoes. Ah, I see. It'd be a lot easier to grow cocaine. I don't know about that, you know, the climate. That's true. I lived here, and so they had a woman in the the middle of town that grew poppy that was there for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Middle of town, whole thing red, whole yard red, growing poppy. My God. It's probably making it David Ortiz, mom. (laughs) Yeah, that's the thing. You got to realize what it is before anybody does anything about it. That's true. I, everything I know about drugs, I know from this show, Nine, and Ozark on uh, Netflix. Ozark, oh, especially. That's it. Marty Bird. Barry, yeah. uh, yes. And that's the same way they had Indians back in the day. They didn't have tobacco there. That was an import thing. That's but they argue, had that weed. You, so what, what do you tell they put in a peace pipe? That's very, uh, you can argue that. Corn? Some did, some didn't. The uh, Seminoles did not believe it. They thought it was a... Uh, well, Seminoles, you, some of them say we're not really Indians. They were just a tribe of people. But nevertheless, the peace pot didn't always mean weed. Some it did. Some it didn't. Well, sometimes it meant peyote. You don't want that. No, well, some people do. Some you ever people had want an experience. You ever done peyote, Barry? Some people want masculine. Yes, I have, and I tell you what, it does take you to the spirit world, and I don't want to go back. What would you see? Do you see the Man, trolls? a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. I saw, like, I heard, like, trees talking to me. I heard animals that weren't there. I saw stuff that was not there. Oh, yeah. And when I finally started coming to consciousness, I was over 10 miles from where I started. Oh, God. Jeez. Then I had to figure out where I came from to start back. I finally found the road, and the dude picked me up. Barry, what if I told you you're still tripping right now on this phone call? Don't do that, Barry, now. No, no. I don't want a flashback. <laughs> I'm an alligator right now, Barry. I'm going to bite your leg. <laughs> I'm a service gator walking around Philadelphia. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to bite me. You don't. Have, I, I, I just call you one of those pet things where you comfort me, man. Well, that's right. That's a sex doll. <laughs> Barry, <laughs> always enjoy your call, sir. Thank you, Barry. Have the best day ever. Uh, y'all too. All right, thank, thank you, Barry. That's an interesting dude. He's always got <laughs> yeah. stories to tell and just fun stuff. No, <laughs> like I, 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 was looking at the clock. I was like, man, I want to sit here and just rifle off some drugs and see Barry's <laughs> done before. Here's another text we got at seven two three four one. I have snorted teeth before. It will get you high, but it's definitely not fun burning while it happens. Oh, he meant Keith. Sorry, okay. he did not snort teeth. teeth. <laughs> Good lord, <laughs> that was a text to speech, gets you or speech to text rather. What if I just keep doing drugs to get home? I had to do some more peyote to get back to the house. Well, we got people snorting teeth, man. Calm down. It's out of hand. I got to do the drugs to get home. You know, like, for real, if they made things like that more accessible to people that really needed it, you wouldn't have people going out, like, mixing all these weird things together and getting off in a weird way, even yeah. worse than they are. Yeah, again. It if, almost seems by design. And again, if those things were regulated, then there wouldn't be fentanyl in them. Mount up. All right. Uh, thank you, Warren G. We're going to take a break. Oh. Oh, not yet. Yeah. Not yet. I, no, look, look, can I drop something else on you real quick? I, I thought, not, did I not hear music in my head just then? No. no. no it, you heard it in your head, but not your headphones. Mm. Um, you want me to throw something else at you on a different tip? Yeah. yeah we uh, we had a P1 texting earlier. I had to go to work, so he couldn't come on and talk to us about this. I could have asked Barry more drug jokes. But it's the... Uh, <laughs> 
I'll read this to you best I can. You guys are talking about cyber flashing this morning during the news of the first hour of the Air show. Air dropping nude pics. I've called over 10 different lawyers' offices, prominent law offices across the nation in L.A., New York, Washington, D.C., offices that have taken care of victims of R. Kelly and Bill Cosby, but nobody seems to want to take my case to sue Tommy Lee of Motley Crue for indecent exposure and cyber flashing, which is basically sexual assault according to the law. Trying to sue Tommy Lee over the nude pic that was on the Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Trying to, you know, sue Tommy Lee over that. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's what he did. It was completely there. It was, but... <laughs> that person, I, 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 man, it's hard to tell by text, the inflection or the tone. Like, what is this person being sarcastic and fun, or are they, like, really serious? I got the sense they were serious about wanting to sue Tommy Lee over that. Because the time the girl texted in and said... You guys were talking about bestiality. I actually had sex with Bigfoot one time, and yeah. we're like, "Can we get you on the show?" And and she came on, and it was I, there. I, <laughs> she might have been peyote, uh, peyote, and with old peyote. Doug and Slide L. Could have been. Uh, or Barry. Barry. Well, peyotean. <laughs> this made it a verb. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Thank you, Doug. Peyote. How, how available <laughs> that is around here. But. Yeah. Well, Tom and Lee could use the uh, Hulk Hogan defense. That was Hulk Hogan's member. That was not Terry's member. Yeah. I also don't want to get on too much of a soapbox about that because then, you know, I don't know what the statute of limitations are, but I accidentally mooned people that morning that were watching Fox News. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But you know what's weird about <laughs> that is I would use the person that was with me in the scene to be my lawyer in the courtroom. Oh, they might not be, might not be able to <laughs> if they were there with you. Raw binario could be my defendant and also uh, is exhibit A. I don't think he could call himself as a witness. <laughs> no, he couldn't. I don't believe so. He Maybe he could. I don't think so. Though. We were doing a, a thing, uh, Toys for Tots, a big thing with Marines. That we had these big inflatables, and you know the one where you it's like a climb climbing wall, but not straight up, kind of at an angle, and then you get to the top and you slide down the inflatable. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we were doing a live TV spot with him, and I didn't tell. Uh, uh, Rob Inerio, tell me when we're done with time, uh, that I was going to quit talking and run because and, we talked about it at the end of it, we we're going to run up this thing. Mm -hmm. So I started running. Well, of course, yep. he caught up with me. Oh, yeah. And my pants fell. <laughs> and my see. whole ass. Don't do that backwards. You mooned everybody on the morning news. <laughs> he didn't mean uh, to. My my everybody on the morning news. Got everybody saw it. Yep. And they go back to the, ooh, ow, ooh, 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 ooh ah, we ee, apologize for no. that. Yeah. We apologize for that. Yeah. <laughs> it's cloudy today, but we just saw a moon, huh? Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a text somebody asking, you guys remember the legal stuff called K2? Oh, the spice? That stuff was awful, evil, nasty, awful, bad. Did they? All that stuff was bad news. I thought like I was going to die one time I tried that. No, it was before that. Um, what about the uh, the other stuff? I saw a I actually saw a, a neon sign for it. I was at a red light. It was a store, and it's called uh, Delta Eight. Is that the same stuff? No, that's uh, Delta Eight THC. Whereas you know the stuff that usually gets the Delta Nine THC is what's in the stuff, and then Delta Eight though you can buy over the counter most places around here. Um, hell, I saw like a, Rotem. I saw a gas station Good off Lord. brand Adderall yesterday. It was called Adol, and it's like orange capsules that Adol XR. So like, man, y'all got everything now, huh? Who was it that what the little I didn't uh, get any. little hornet pills were? Kind of, yeah, but these, I mean, these are marketed like, I mean, as a, an Adderall ripoff, like pretty directly as an Adderall ripoff. Sounds like you're popping them in the background right now. <laughs> this is Batterall. You want some? Addiction. <laughs> this is Batterall. They're shaped like little bat wings. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 like a batarang. Uh, yeah. Okay. There's Not a like nuts when they little, get hot. little granules in it, just like real has got. You know, it's weird. I know how Nine's going to respond. I know how Fat Boy's going to respond. Nine with facts, Fat Boy in the gutter. Perfect. <laughs> nah. Bat wings will be over soon. Fall's coming. Uh, uh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, no kidding. All right, we're going to take us a little break. Uh, and when we come back, something that yesterday I thought was going to – I thought there would be bleeps. I thought there would be, all right, we got to take this off the air because you're our cousin. It turned out to be heartwarming. But the reason why the girl did not talk to her sister for over three years was shocking, but it's got a nice ending to it. Tell about true the consequences. It re-premieres next morning, everybody. Feed your need for TRG. Oh, yes, it's good. At theriseguys.com and on the Odyssey app. This is the Rise Guys Morning Show. 
some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite NFL team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite NFL team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite NFL team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite NFL team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Some fans gear up for game day, but some fans follow their team every day. That's why the Locked On Podcast Network has a daily podcast for your favorite NFL team. Every trade, every overtime win, every game. Our local experts cover the biggest stories around your team every day. Search Locked On plus your favorite NFL team on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.